first arrived. Emergency. Please first arrive. Emergency. Please first arrive. down to the queens welcome 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 ladies gentlemen everybody inside and outside of the gender spectrum i am your co-host dylan murray and i am joined once again by the elusive the returning alex richards how you doing buddy you are hosting the show so i'll just give it all to you i'm happy to have you back yeah much like lebron james uh <laughs> once upon a time i made a way you're comparing yourself to lebron james in february that's crazy uh, why? What, what? What did he do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. What did he here's, do in February? Here's, here's here's the thing about that is um our like it's, the it's... dates are different. Yeah. It is not Black History Month where I am. That is October. Uh, it is currently Queer History Month apparently in in Europe. Oh so. man, Alex, I'm trying not to throw you under the bus. Uh, a minute and a half into you your return. Why? So what please, did I, what did I, do? I, I really want to say, oh, so that means in February, Alex does not care about. Um, I can finish the sentence. All right. Okay. I don't. You, you can't get it canceled. I only came back. Exactly. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a minute. We're a minute right. in. I need to. I need to. All yeah. right. Um, anyway, <laughs> I made my. I made the decision, and I. I. Uh, there was a bidding war. There was a bit of a bidding war, uh, for, between Joshi and uh, CMLL. And sadly, CML so lost. Uh, they did not make a, a good option. Uh, Joshi offered me a good contract, though. It was uh, I got I got a player option. So, well, you know, CMLL. It's, it's, it's funny that this all happened during Fantasca Mania, so nobody was in Arena Mexico. <laughs> 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 and and it doesn't get uploaded anywhere anymore because they um they're on a YouTube thing now, and mm. it's it's difficult to to get YouTube stuff. So yeah, that's that's a rough situation, but. Uh, you did listen to the shows because you had to edit them. Um, so you know that since uh, the big the big deal happened, um, or the big you know uh, departure, I should say, uh, I have been I have been doing Rossi Watch every single episode. Um, okay. This week this week presents the lightest Rossi Watch of of all time uh, since its inception a week ago. Because uh, I don't even have notes. All, all it is is that Rossi pretended to be in New York um, mm-hmm. for some reason. That was funny. Uh, Six Star actually took a picture from the exact angle that Rossi did in New York, and Rossi's is like, like there's an entire building that isn't in Rossi's. <laughs> like, like you, this, this, these pictures were from like years ago. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's part one of Rossi Watch, and then also Sunny noted that um, there won't be as many departures at the end of March as as many expected. Uh, he he kind of alluded to it being like, well, in April, imagine losing, and this is a crazy comparison, imagine losing Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, Dominic Mysterio, and Gunther. That's what will happen mm-hmm. to stardom. Crazy comparison to make. <laughs> but Well, I mean, Julia is obviously one of those. Um, Julia is probably like either the Cody or the Roman, depending on how he feels. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think that might be Roman. No, that's Cody. Yeah. That's definitely Cody. So that means Roman is like yeah. handpicked franchise player, and there's a few of those, um, mainly in Queen's Quest. So it could be one of them. Uh, Dominic Mysterio might be my Sakurai. You know, a that's... rookie improving heel. Yeah, sure. I don't know who that's disrespectful to. Well, uh, Gunther, Gunther, Gunther. That's definitely Momo. That's got to be Momo. I, I okay. No more Hazuki, right? I like haven't. That's... I haven't heard. I haven't heard much. But I am getting very confused by how little I've heard about Momo Watsunabe. Like overall, yeah. like by literally everybody. It's like, I like people will ask me. It's like, have you like? What do you think about Momo? And I'm just like, I have not like. Her name is is like I haven't heard anybody bring her up, ever. Uh, I haven't heard anybody bring anybody up to be fair. Um, but like. Momo just feels very like, what the fuck's going on with Momo? But yeah, I, I think Momo could be a Gunther. Uh, yeah, 
Because it depends on what he means, but I would imagine either like workhorse or you know long reigning champion, and Momo fits both of those. Yes, that, that that's true. I I don't know. We'll see. I'm excited to to see what happens there. But since and that's that probably uh, as I spoke to you off air, that probably contributed to your uh, decision to come back earlier than than even I expected. Was that it's like oh, well, there's not going to be like this huge earth shattering thing in the next five weeks so it's like why not just come back and you know play it by ear type of thing stardom is pretending nothing is happening and so i yeah. felt silly being like i want to wait and see how things fall and they're just like now nah, we're just going like uh, <laughs> what exodus exodus nah man rossi who's rossi so the it's first like, person well... to bring it up uh was momokogo who said yes today i am quitting being a fucking loser, I'm ready to win. <laughs> Just crazy to say at a time like this. <laughs> She's a real one, honestly. Um, but yeah, I guess we gotta gotta go back to it. Uh, I got to avoid talking openly about the Rossi departure, which is mm. a great bullet to dodge. <laughs> um, but I'm sure there will be a lot more opportunity to to discuss that because. Uh, you know, it's going to have a big impact on this show, obviously, uh, whatever yeah. Rossi ends up doing. So that's fun. Uh, what was also fun is we're going to start, as we always do, with uh, stardom wrestlers in New Japan Pro Wrestling Rings. Um, mm-hmm. And that was Rocka and Starlight Kid taking part in Fantastica Mania on the 17th of February. Uh, La Jarochita and Chuvia beat Rocka and Starlight Kid in 12 I thought minutes. It was Yuvia. It's it's kind of like Julia, but Huvia. You know? See, I said Julia one time, and everybody made fun of me. So I was just like, I was call it Yuvia because that's what. No, it, I think it it's Juvia. Like. They were saying Juvia on the English commentary when she was on Strong mm. that one time. So I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Jarachita pinned Rocca in twelve and a half minutes with a name that I will not be pronouncing. Uh, Dude, she worked stiff. They were working yeah. stiff. And that's the thing with the CMLL girls is um, they know they're not as athletic and mind-blowing as a mask- mascara dorada. So they just kind of kill each other. And it is fantastic. So if you like this, you'll probably like a lot of the stuff CMLL women do because it is very impactful stuff. It is. Um, well, they they also have to work around Tessa Blanchard. That is an issue. Um, but I do find it fascinating how CMLL women jesus christ there was just a big ass notification in my ear mm-hmm. it was the loudest shit i've ever heard okay sorry um how cmll's women have evolved over time because yeah. you know we obviously have plenty of experience watching like the moranos um back in in you know the early 90s of ajw and they are what influenced the wrestlers in ajw um when they went over to to mexico so now i do kind of find it interesting it's like uh, you know i'm sure we'll talk about it very briefly in as we talk about this match uh i would love to see kid go to mexico for example you know to train there um but i also wonder like what she would learn there because uh the luchadoras nowadays do hit a lot harder like joshi wrestlers and they aren't as like conventionally lucha i guess you can call it um like the like they were back in the day when AJW did send uh, their wrestlers over to to CMLL or EMLL at the time, maybe I don't remember. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this match. I, I thought it was very fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm a big CMLL fan, so I was into it. Um, Starlight Kid, you are in the wrong place, girl. Like she is born. She could be so to much be better in Arena Mexico. She she could be so much better if she went to Mexico. Uh, she just fit like the way she, the she CMLL would... wrestlers could base for her, and the way her heel mm-hmm. stuff just fits how Lucha tends to flow. I was I like, liked she is perfect. Match. Like yeah, I was she, like, she no, was I perfect. I appreciate how she fits here. I, I really appreciate her work. Like I said, like if she went to Mexico for a while and like really like learned, like took it in, she would probably come back as as one of my maybe not one of my favorites, but like way higher on my you know favorite leaderboard. Um, in stardom because i think that that's kind of what she's missing is just like working in, in an environment like that that can really uh help her evolve as a wrestler more so than she has been in the past couple of years 
think she would come back as a more obnoxious heel, and I, it, you might like smack your head off a wall. Yeah, but she'd also that. be better in ring. Uh, you're um, right. Maybe. But, but I, 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 I think know. she'd probably improve. Character it. aspect but... might annoy you, because uh, some of the heels there are very over the top. But I, I don't true. know. All I know is, kid, there's a place I mean... <laughs> uh, teaming with Reyna Isis right there for you whenever you want to take it. You and nah, Scotty you know could burn right. down Arena Mexico together. That guy just know it happened. You're right. Um, I need Starlight Kid to learn how to be an obnoxious hero from Soberano Jr., who is like my favorite motherfucker in the world. <laughs> I love that fucker so, so much. Your taste in wrestling is so funny because you just like you're like ah oh, he's a dick. I love him, and then you're like Starlight Kid's a dick. I hate her. I'm just like well, what is this? How does this happen? Because uh, like, I doing? like I like Soberano's in ring uh, enough to where it like it complements it instead of takes away from it. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure, I guess. I, I don't like see I what's said, so think... different about like Katsuhiko Nakajima and Starlight Kid in that regard. Okay, They're both that's insane. <laughs> that, they is are both, insane. that is their entire thing. Katsuhiko is his entire matches are built around him being a prick. Like, okay, so is Starlight again, Kid. You're comparing one of the best modern male wrestlers in the world um, to to it is the, great. that one it's wrestler great. who's a bit worse, who's a bit nah, worse than Azumi. Man. You know what I mean? It is great. Um, but like a bit worse than Azumi is still pretty great. No, you're on, right on the scale uh, of Puro versus Joshi. I think. Okay, well, Katsuhiko Nakajima is. We're not having this discussion. <laughs> I'm just, you just, I'm just curious. You interest me. Um. Anyway, this um. Yeah, this oh, was good. Yeah. I don't think the crowd gave a shit, but I couldn't. No, oh no, they did. They they were getting the 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 uh, bell horns doing the SLK thing. That was cool. Yeah, um, yeah I mean. They cared more than they should, but not a lot because um, we, man, I know this is like a, a whole thing and it's been talked about many a times, but it is kind of wild that uh, they don't do more crossover with New Japan um, or no, that New Japan doesn't have them on more of their shows. Uh, and I imagine that will continue to change with Tanahashi at the helm and with Okada um, in both Tanahashi. offices. Yeah, like, because okay, I think... And I think you can agree. It's like, yeah, I don't want it to be an issue with like, oh, wrestlers are going to not be on Stardom shows to be on New Japan shows. But that's usually not what would be the case. So I don't know why they don't just like have them on their Corkin shows usually, you know, which are usually like Road 2 shows. I think Chris Charlton was was tweeting a lot about it, that. He's like, it's kind of ridiculous that we didn't get a preview tag in New Japan for Mina versus Mayu. Because it's like, that would make the most sense ever. <laughs> like, why the fuck wouldn't we do that? Um, and he like added Okada and everything. So there is like a a swelling of support for that within New Japan. I just think Gato doesn't give a fuck. I think that's ultimately the dude. Gato the... gets everything he wants, and he does not want women's wrestling. I fucking hate um, Gato. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> I, don't so how, I don't know how long he lasts in that job. He given last how much many longer. shakeups there has been, but once he's gone, I would imagine. They will appoint a suit who will just kind of do a lot more of what they say. You yeah. probably will see more women on New Japan shows. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't see a need to force it either. If the audience doesn't want no. it, then they don't want it. Like the All Japan Pro Wrestling stuff, where uh, they're like putting actress girls off for matches on there, and the crowd just no. And just I, doesn't I agree. Give a damn. Like, but I think it's the thing about it. New Japan that we've seen is that the crowd is willing to care if you give them a reason to care. And I think that's the problem, right? Um, this is the first kinda. women's match in New Japan since Sakura Genesis. You know, like that's a long time. If they had seen Sak- if they had seen Starlight Kid two or three more times even since then, I'm sure they would be, like, they would care more than they did for this match. And they still cared about this match. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say? I think it's a matter yeah. of just like, you know, they they don't care enough to pick up a whole new promotion yet. But if you put them on the cards every couple months or, you know, on, on the Road 2 show every once in a while, like, I'm sure more people would, would pay a little bit more attention and be more invested in it. Um, I think what they're doing now just doesn't really help anyone. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of saying I hope it improves. Not so much force it, because I get what you mean, but I, I do think there is room for improvement. One other thing the I want to know. The real, the real thing to want is more stardom CMLL. Oh, I agree. That's, 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 really that's actually what I was going to say. I think, I think 
Ruaka should also go to Mexico and learn to be the female hechicero and do the fire gimmick. You know what I mean? Like do the whole, you know, I'm doing the thing uh, with my hands. Yeah, we don't we don't want her, but it's you know it's it's all right. I guess she can she can come along if she wants. She has to lose to Scotty though. That's that's, that's the rule. Right. She, she's Scotty. gonna learn. She's gonna learn Yave, brother. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I want I want more CMLL that's Joshi stuff. Thing. It's a very complimentary style. You know, it's it's kind of always worked. So let's, that's another thing with it. Kid is that she wants to be a technical wrestler and she's but she's not very good at it. I think going to Mexico, she would actually get good at it. Maybe I, I think you're overestimating the technical wrestling of the women's matches. Uh, they kind of just tee off usually. So okay, well I maybe not CMLL. Maybe we just have to send her over to Hamada's school, and maybe that will sort it. Uh, I don't know if Hamada is kosher, but we who knows? Anyway. Uh, that Just was the look. that was the stardom in uh, New Japan for right. this week. Um, there is another match coming up soon. I don't we'll know when it is. Oh, it's it's in two days. Oh, lovely. Okay, so that is that's Mina and Mayu, and we'll we'll get into that next week on the show. Uh, in the meantime, there was some news from the world of stardom uh, earlier today. They announced the lineup for the Cinderella Tournament 2024. So. They've done something very interesting here. They've broke it up. There is seeding now. So there is a first round, and then there is a bunch of people who have got biased to the second round. So first round is Saida, Koguma, Hanan, Momokogo, who's making her return after a long layoff, and Yuzuki, Lady C, Miyo Masaki, Yuna Mizumori, Sayaka Karara, Saki, Ooh. Of God's Eye, so oh, Saki Kashima, <laughs> good. Um, Rana Yagami, Hanako, Zena, Natsuko Tora, Starlight Kid, and Roka. So they're all starting from the first round, and then entering the second round is the seed holders of Mei Sera, Azumi, Hazuki, Suzu Suzuki, Ai Sakurai, Amisore, Waka Skiyama, and Mirai. So people noticed immediately. There is no Micah, there's no Mayu, there there's is no, no major Mina, champions. There's no Tam. There's oh, yeah. um just got Hazuki in there, just about. But the kind of top top names, uh Siri is Siri isn't in it, right? No, Siri no is Siri, not Momotanabe is not. No Julia, no Momo. Um so a lot of the top stars so, are kind of left out. So Taro Okada specifically said uh, no top champions, which means basically every champion except for the artists and the high speed, all of them were exempt from the tournament. Um, they were not allowed to enter, and the rest, uh, who fucking knows? He just, <laughs> he's just like, and the rest are, uh, you know. Like, he was so. kind of saying that like the aim of the tournament is meant to be a climb the stairs or something to be Cinderella. Um, so it's it's meant to be more focused on people who need the wish rather than see us putting the top names in. The thing about that is it's kind of inconsistent, considering Mirai and Suzu are both there. I guess, but they and I mean I don't know. <laughs> um, you kind of had to. Well, they got in because of the the new seating rule. That's the only reason they're there. Suzu first round was, people are was... different. Yeah, I guess. Like but Suzu, Suzu got her Suzu's spot for winning the game. for winning the GP. That's why oh they yeah, it's and then it's Hazuki, Azumi, and Mesa that just kind of got added in there. Yeah, so he did pick like a lot of the fresh faces, and then the seeding rules got in some of the bigger names. And you do need some of those bigger names, obviously, to draw interest to the tournament. Um, but I like the setup as it is. Um, the Cinderella tournament is kind of built for. And elevating somebody rather than just giving Tam another win to set up a, a, a tile match, you know? Hmm. I don't know. I, I'm mixed about it ultimately. Uh like I'm I'm not opposed to it, but I definitely will miss like some of the cool matchups you get that it's like obviously they aren't very like, you know, noteworthy, but I did kind of I think I think last year fucked this company up in ways that we will never truly <laughs> stop feeling the effects of um because i think like two years ago the first mirai win i thought that tournament was pretty well done all things considered um not as good as the old ones but it was it was still pretty well done i think last year's was what everybody was like okay this is the problem i was like no the problem is because there was 
like five or six draws in the first round last year. None of the first round matches were like even notable, except for I, I think Kazuki and Izumi was very fun, but that was a build to the Mercedes match. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, and other than that, it's like there was just not really much uh, for the top stars to do, right? You look at the final four, it was Amisori, Wakasukiyama, Mai Sakurai, and Mirai. None of those people, except for Mirai, had, you know, a notable main event. Uh, Amisori. Like, it, I, I get it was why a very doing badly like built uh, final yes. four. The tournament there was, was very no... shoddy. There was no narratives in that tournament at mm-hmm. all. That was ultimately the issue. Is like if if you know somebody put somebody over and that was like a big deal, it would be cool. Nobody put anybody over here <laughs> last year. <laughs> like that was the issue. So mm-hmm. I think taking out um, you know, some of the top stars, I get taken out the champions, but I do find it interesting they took out the Momo Watanabe's and the Shuri's. And the uh, you know, and Mina, like all three Did of Tommy those. And... No, Tommy and Sire, Tommy's... Are out, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, Tommy and Sire are, are top champions. Yeah, um, yeah. I just think that like some of these people don't make sense to not be in it. Like I'm cool well, with the with the championship rule. Is is, cool is it a hint that. that Momo is is one of the people? Got, you know, I don't know because I Momo after goes. I got it. I got it. After be that, um, after that tag match, which I'm very excited to talk about. I think my Sakurai is dipping, and after her yeah. getting a her losing to Unimon singles, and my also Sakurai her just is, losing is definitely... a million times, and yeah. her being friends with Julia, and mm-hmm. there's a million reasons why my Sakurai is probably gone. Rossi loves um, her. That's the thing. Rossi, and yeah, and Rossi big, like, big came up with the gimmick. Uh, yeah, I, like she's gone probably, but mm-hmm. I like so I don't know if that's indicative of Momo dipping, but. Yeah, I think I think there are just a few admissions that I'm just like I feel like that could have like made this a bit more lively, um, than it is right I now. I think it will enjoy excited. it more in in the moment. I feel like yeah, this I'm is excited for like the Saeedas who will probably mm-hmm. get to the second round. You know what I mean? Like for example, will they change the format now that they've changed the the way people go in? What do you mean? Um, the rules? They didn't seem to specify about the rules. Do you think they uh, changed those? No, it's probably the same. It's probably still 10-minute time limits for the round of 16, which are the non-seated wrestlers. Um, yeah. And Raka did mention that over-the-top rope is a thing. Okay. Uh, right. Either either she was saying it's not a thing anymore for some reason, which I don't know why Ruaka would fucking say that. Or she was saying, I'm going to throw my focus over the top rope. That's my strat. <laughs> which I think is way funnier. Um, yeah. So I imagine it's still over-the-top rope and still 10 minutes for the first round and then seating from there um i don't know if you've known but the the time limits on the on the house shows have gone up so i don't know if they will increase the time limits for the for the matches like if the first round will be 15 and the second round will be 20 you know whatever uh but i imagine they probably keep the format the same interesting okay all right well that was my only my only thing um we'll get into that anyway more uh, as as the tournament is coming up, um, but it is nice to see Momoko go back. That's that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, I felt yeah, bad no for her. She was watching Fantastic Mania. Uh, I saw that. Like, yeah, fascinated by it. She's a big CMLL girl. Yeah, that's what made her um, so fucking good. No, yeah, she went to CMLL. <laughs> I remember now. She she went as a an alternate as well, didn't she? Mm-hmm. I think somebody else is meant to go. That's, yeah, she went from ice. That's always yeah, because it was meant to be. Scushy? It wouldn't have been Scushy. Maybe it was Yuki Mashiro. She's always injured. Um, that sounds mean, but she did just come back and got injured. No, so I, <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I think it might have been Mashiro. But um, yeah, the Gacha King. We were expecting oh, the Gacha King. One other thing is that uh, Zena's hunting for Mirai. That's what she said in her promo. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Zena being back. Zena so came based. back and is fucking killer, bro. <laughs> she came back and has been fucking people up. It's great. I, I knew that original Club Venus crew had had something. Um, you keep saying yeah. it like like there were more than two great white women in that in that group. I thought Jessie served. You I know, know you she served, and her entrance theme had like a really cool riff, and I was like, hell yeah. Um, 
Yeah, they haven't announced anything beyond this weekend's cards because apparently they've gotten really bad at that. So that's fun. Oh, yeah. Um, and the cards this weekend don't look very fun. So we're just going to go into review mode and probably focus on that a little bit. Um, there's only one show oh. up in full. Yeah, to I was going to say, how much do you want to review? Because like, there, have you seen anything before this past Corkin? The fourteenth. Yes, indeed. I I stayed plugged in. Um, or the. I don't know which one I saw. I definitely saw one of the E Nexus V tags from the other shows. Oh, the um, elimination? No. <laughs> oh, you should have you should have seen the elimination match. That was really great. All right. Well, maybe I'll go back someday. Um, but anyway, we have stuff to review. So we do. There's only two shows to review, and only one of them is up because uh, it was live. Because they they yeah. found a way to make money now. Um, so this was. Stardom in Corkin 2024, February 2. Um, except it was not on February 2. <laughs> I hate I hate that name. I, I was like, horrendous. I'm not putting that in my I'm not putting that in my fucking match guide. I'm changing the name. <laughs> it's so bad. Um anyway, they did uh, 956 fans in Corkin Hall. Um, which for a Saturday is kind of lower than you'd think, but they did run the same venue on Wednesday, so that's going to eat into it. Um, this card also also like half bad. 11. Yeah, it was yeah also really but bad. it was at half 11. And I would not be getting up that early for wrestling. Just to, I, I won't lie to you. A lot of the Corkins so. historically have been pretty early, but yeah, it was yeah. very early. I mean, are you getting up that early to see um, Suzuki versus Rani Agami? I don't know, man. Yes. I, I'm, I'm sleeping in. That's, that's just me. See, but the beauty of this was that it was so early that I just like this was like 7 p.m. for me. So I, um, I, me, me, Scott, and Xavier actually actually watched the show together. Um, it was a it was a good time, and it, that are you, definitely. Are you, are you inc- admitting that... to 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 oh you know piracy here, Dylan? It's not that piracy. Is... It's a watch party. We we all chipped in funds. You know, it's mm, social. I don't know. I, we might, might got to run that one by. The Stardom Federation or something. I don't know. The Federation? That's crazy. Um, <laughs> I missed annoying you. I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, the opening match here. The Stardom Feds. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, we had Starlight Kid and Rocka beat Lady C and Azumi. Um, I didn't know this happened. Okay. So one thing I loved from the past week is... Ruaka announced that she was going to be in Fantasca Mania, right? She mm-hmm. didn't know what the name of the tour was, but she knew it was Lucha. Right. Um, and after that, Azumi was fucking pissed. Because <laughs> she's like, bitch, I should be in Fantasca Mania. Look at how I wrestle. Like, I was made for this shit, bro. And so she was pissed. So her and Ruaka entered into like a mini feud for a few days um, over these two Corkin shows. Um, consisting of them shouting Viva Mexico back at each other. Right. Um and I thought that was fucking hilarious. Also, in I don't think it was this match. It was the match before. Uh, Izumi just like ran circles around her and beat her up, and then said, "How are you gonna deal with luchadoras, bro? How are you gonna do this?" <laughs> Funny fucks. thing being that uh, none of them, none of them no, really moved that fast aside from Andromeda. <laughs> like and she was not there. Like Rocco would get on kind of okay with. Uh, That's why I mean, Rocco would mesh very well with the. <laughs> It would depend, though. I feel like you'd need Scotty and Sexy Soul there because they're kind of the Hoss ones. Um, but I don't know. The rest of them, they might just kind of oh, be meaty Christ. enough. I don't know. But um, yeah, that's really funny. I didn't know that match happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like I, I thought Suzu and Rano was the opener. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it was also funny because um, and this is this is a tiny bit of inside baseball. Um, Walker the commentator for New Japan did not know this match was happening either. And <laughs> Scott was like, oh, oh yeah, just so you know, there's a, they're having a match right now. And he's like, the show's in like four hours. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? And he's like, yeah, we like, <laughs> they're wrestling. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that was that, that, that popped Walker when uh, Scotty texted him about that. Um, but yeah, I, I loved the Izumi Ruaka, um, kind of mini feud that they ran where it was just kind of Azumi being jealous of Ruaka getting to wrestle on a Lucha show. Alright, fair enough. Um, the one match I did check in for was Suzuki beating Rani Agami in 7 minutes and 50 seconds with the Yokobari Rock. 
um, that was a submission. Suzu kind of got annoyed at Rana for doing arm bars and said, I will submit you. Um, yep. and yeah, Rana was good here. Uh, I like Rana. Suzu continues to exist. They post. I think Suzu's good at these. At these, um, Suzu's good yeah. at these, you know, uh, undercarder matches. Yeah, Suzu is good. She's a tall Also, the but... Yokobari lock is fucking sick. Yeah, it, it looks painful. But Rana, okay. star of the show here. I like Rana. Rana, cool. Uh, the match after that was May Sarah beating Waka Skiyama in just under seven minutes with a shooting star. Um, this is everything you'd expect from uh, May Sarah wrestling Waka Skiyama. Uh, it was a lot of ass focused offense from May Sarah and a lot of ass based offense from Waka Sukiyama. Uh, May Sarah was going for the thousand years of death, but she couldn't. She couldn't. She couldn't get it. Um, but yeah, a lot of ass. Lava ass, and not in like a derogatory. Just literally, they they kept hitting each other with and in the ass. So, yeah, my stare is cool. Yeah, I mean Waka, you know, very inspired by Naomi there with the the jumping high I, rear thing. I don't think she calls it the rear view though. Probably not. She doesn't get as much of a hop on it. To be fair, but you do it's know, not. you do know that Naomi does call it the rear view. Yes. Yes. Because there was a, there was a whole like TikTok thing one time about the rear view where people would do it to others and it it like fucked people up. <laughs> it was like, damn, you could yeah. send somebody flying. So yeah, uh, I respect the rear view. The, um, that meme is very funny because back in the day, uh, the women just didn't get anything. So she was using that move for like a year and a half, and every time they would have to be like, yeah, she calls that the rear view because it would be like the first time she's wrestled fucking forever <laughs> like because they didn't put fucking women on the show <laughs> yeah you know and now she's um she back former i guess tna or impact women's yeah. world champion knockouts champion crazy yeah. remember when like in the early days of this show there was like somebody tweeting about how naomi would fit right in and start them and we were like <laughs> no <laughs> i thought was... she could have been good or she could have could have gotten better uh if she went to start yeah. them, but I didn't think that was like a, a must, like yeah. me did. This is a very weird time back then, but um, yeah, asses were used. Um, but I, May Sarah was just too fast for Waka, and it was not a good like. Waka can do well if she's given somebody to wrestle up to, if she's like allowed to be the baby face of the match. But May Sarah doesn't really give her that chance. So yeah, May Sarah is no offense to Waka; she's way more likable. Uh, and that's not, not even that. She's just not like a brick that you have to yeah get away at. She's just a little girl who runs fast. This is true. Will kick you in the face. is is very funny because like she's one of my favorite wrestlers right now, but she's had very few great or good matches even because she just keeps getting paired with like not great pairings. It's kind yeah. of funny. It's like she had that, that Hazuki match, and other than that, it's like, uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. You know, it'll happen sometimes. Uh, the next match then was Miyo Amasaki, Sayaka Matani, and Utami Hayashishita of Queen's Quest beating Momo Watanabe, Fuki Gendeth, and Rina. Uh, Miyo Amasaki pinned Rina in 11 minutes with three separate tenseis. Um, this was the most I've ever seen from Miyo Amasaki. She was she was into it. Like she yeah. needed to beat up Rena. Um, like just passion r- radiating off her, uh, energy, life into her performance. Uh she was a real standout here. You know, she hit the El Idolo. I think that should just be her finish. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought she did well. I totally forgot this match happened until right now when I'm reading my notes. I'm just like, oh yeah, all that did happen. It's um, crazy. Death went for a cartwheel, like did went for the the Kelly Kelly spot that Miyu does. Um, I know it's the that's the uh, Keiji Mudo spot, but I call it the Kelly Kelly spot. Um, she went for that, and everybody popped huge. Uh, Death usually does get some of the biggest pops on the card, <laughs> like pretty it's, pretty regular. They're really gonna miss her when she like. Because here's the thing, Kyori Yonayama is one thousand percent going to be loyal to Rossi since she's a freelancer. 
like the, the second he opens his promotion, she's taken dates with him. Probably, yeah. That is a decade plus can. the year relationship, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. no, that she she will be. Uh... I wonder if he changes the gimmick. I wonder. I, that, that's actually something I wonder with a few people is like, and I don't expect whole factions to leave at least not yet, um, because the only the only whole faction I think would leave is Stars and Mayu isn't gone yet, so that can't be a whole faction. I wonder theoretically if there are like bunches of people, like if if an entire trio of people went to Rossi, uh, would they still be like homies in his kayfabe, or would they just separate? You, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Honestly, I I don't know what he's gonna do. Um, do I don't want to spend half the show talking about Rossi. That's why I <laughs> wanted to like take the Wait break. Because yeah, because half the show would just be like, I wonder if this is gonna happen. But um, yeah, I don't know if he's gonna keep factions because that seems to be a Fuka thing that he just kept. Um, like he didn't do factions in Arjun, as far as I'm aware. He um. Well he like briefly did factions in AJW and then let them die. So I don't know if he's a factions guy uh, or if he just kind of kept it because Fuka wanted it. Um, Plus that was kind of the meta uh, in wrestling, like the yeah. bigger companies uh, during that time. But I've noticed more and more companies are kind of like kind of killing off their factions. A yeah, bit more. and maybe he um, maybe he like sees the money in it because there is easy merch in oh, factions yeah. and like I mean people. I've. Probably the three, the three shirts I've been the most inclined to buy in wrestling that I ended up not doing, but are like a Suzuki Goon shirt, a Congo shirt, a Team Taz shirt. All my favorite factions actually fucking die. I don't know if you could tell. Um, you know, Queen's Quest shirt. Like it, it's always like a, a faction shirt more than a wrestler shirt, just because I, yeah. I kind of there is just as a you know consumer, I think factions are cool. So yeah, no, I think I think a lot of people are the same. Um. Yeah, um, Mew did I thought, well. you know, you. Mew and Rina did this story quite well of Rina kind of beating Kevin a few times and Mew Amasaki mm -hmm. just being pissed off then and like really fighting back. Um, yeah, and Mew I kind jumped of jumped her, yeah, she jumped her like I like who <laughs> Tammy and I had to like leg it in after her to, to back her up. It was it was crazy. Like, uh, they've done a really good job with this. And if Miu doesn't win, I would be very surprised. They've done a real good job of like motivating and energizing her. And I think you've kind of run the course with this Rena title run. Like I don't want to see Rena versus Rana. I want to see Rena versus Carrara. I want to see Kevin versus these people. Because that's kind yeah. of the easy easy play there with Kevin being the senior of the group. No, I agree. Um I, I do think that Damn, that means that happen that's happening this weekend. Wait, no, she's not winning. Yeah, it's wait, why? Because it's Rena's hometown. Yeah, but you can you can beat Rena there. They don't usually do that. Unless yeah, it's I mean, one of the other yeah. sisters beating her. No, you gotta you gotta switch the title. Like, Amasaki has to be Miyu the next champion. Yes, Miyu has to be the next champion, but it, I I don't know if they'd run it there. Because the thing is they have a Kyoto show the next week, basically. That they could have run this if Kevin was winning. Yeah, how would they do that though? Maybe this is just the new Taro Okada stuff, and he doesn't care, and he'll do that. But I don't know how you do it. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, um, I mean they have done that before, where like Rena could cheat to beat her, and then me is like, "Nah, I want a real match, motherfucker. We're going to we're going my turf," and then they run that match back. Yeah, then, yeah, that would be very New Japan, wouldn't it? I mean, like, they no, used we're gonna to do a lumberjack match, all the fucking guys. Time. We're gonna we're gonna do a lumberjack match or something. That was literally the TCS gimmick. <laughs> no, but I'm just I'm, I'm I'm making jokes about Gato. Leave me leave me alone. Yeah, anyway, yeah. um, yeah, I could definitely see them doing something like that, I guess. But we'll we'll have to wait and see. Cause I don't I don't know if you just run it back to back like that. Yeah, we'll have to wait um, talk about it. Saya and Utami interested me because they like stood off to the side a lot. Um, I don't know that's what they've match. been doing this entire fucking time. <laughs> yeah, Uta Utami's behavior is very strange. Uh, her hugging Lady C after the match on Tuesday was kind of like a hmm. And now her standing aside and letting Kevin take center stage is very much a hmm. <laughs> so Yeah, the Lady um, C match did make me think. And then you, like, Lady C goes backstage after this show and is like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm with stardom for the long haul. This is my home, you know, all that type of shit. I was like, okay, so it's not you. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. I'm, I'm, um, I'm very curious about that. I love behavior. speculation. Speculation is so <laughs> fun. <laughs> kind of have to do it. I feel like, yeah. um, we would be like blind not to try and pick out signs, I guess. And, and the homegrowns are always the ones you will, you'll kind of look at first. And like, yeah, yeah. I mean, anyone trained under Rossi, I feel like it has a natural affinity for him. So mm. I'd be very surprised if those people don't lean towards him. But I don't At know. Least weigh the option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Saya is like one of his favorite wrestlers, supposedly. So I would, I mean, he probably just offered her the bag. I don't know if she's going to go, but if he had a bag, he would offer it to her. So that's all I can put out there. But I do yeah. think Utami and Saya have been acting very strange. And uh, I don't know if I'm over overreacting or not. But but it, I think the one thing that does kind of give me a pause on that is that they haven't even like began to tease a vague idea of another goddess title defense. And yeah, if these either just or kind both of pop them up are out of leaving. nowhere. Like, Taro yeah, Okada do. just kind of goes with it. Like, he's just like, oh, yeah, we're done. Like, it's a title match now. It's like, all right, yeah. cool. Man. I, 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 I say that it, it could be, you know, booked for, but we might be talking about the upcoming tag team title match this weekend, you know, next week when we cover Yeah, that. I mean, what are they doing this weekend? I will check. Cause They're that doing house shows this weekend. Easy. I believe there's house shows. You know, what are what is Sai and Utami doing? I mean, oh, um, that's a good question. So Utami is teaming with Kevin against Tora and Rina, so that won't be it. Uh, Sayaka Matani is she even on this? Hello? Oh yeah, she is. She's in a trios match. So I don't know if FWC challenges because they're against FWC Saya. Just lost in like yeah. eight minutes. Oh god. Okay. They're Julia. against Saya. And that kind of is the only thing that I would think of. Um. Another show then, Utami, Saya, and Lady C against Julia, Sarah, and Sakurai. And well, they're not going to drop to Julia. Or Sakurai. No. So yeah, I don't know. We, we won't get an indication unless it comes yeah, from day one. That's that's where um, I kind of, um, I have a pause about both members of Aphrodite, is that it's like, they don't seem like they're in any rush to take the both off of them but then again they yeah. could always put a tag tile match on any of the cinderella dates since no, yeah i yeah i would imagine the cinderella, cinderella pay-per-views are stacked with tile matches to, to progress it. things um because micah has to defend her belt at some point you know same with i know um so i don't know but yeah, that's that's that match. Um, after that, then we got on to Saki Kashima, Amisore, Marai, and Siri beating Yuzuki, Hazuki, Koguma, and Mayu Iwatani of the Stars. Uh, Siri submit Yuzuki in just under fifteen minutes in the Koguma return match. So no no winning return for Koguma there, sadly. Um, I, I enjoyed this. Um, Mayu kicked the shit out of Marai, and in return, Siri pulverized Yuzuki. Uh, like that, that was a murder Excuse at me. the end there. Um, yeah. Saki is still funny. I like Saki Kashima. Her going for like a running boot and just being like, "Nah, I'm out of here." Uh, that was that was based. I love her. Man, on one of the shows, she just actually like like I think Utami threw her under the ring and she never came out. That's amazing. Oh my god! I think about the show <laughs> after this. Saki um, is a genius. Yeah. Uh, she's like, you know what, I'm, I'm cool down here. And then, like, it was either Mariah or Ami, like, fished her out from under the ring. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was happy to see Koguma back. That brightens up my day. Uh, Stars fucked up the pose, which was the funniest shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hazuki and, and Koguma just died laughing as they both fell to the floor. It was great. Um, Kuma pose, all that good stuff. Shuri's been defeating, I don't know if you've, if you've peeped this, Shuri's been defeating all of the rookies with the rear naked choke. Um, hmm. she beat Yuzuki here. Um, I believe she beat. Uh, who did she beat the last time? I, I imagine she beat Karara with it. Um, and she's beaten me with it. So she's beaten basically everybody with that shit. Um, and it's kind of like her go-to for the younger wrestlers is to <laughs> knock their asses out. I guess. Yeah. Um. I guess it's just an easy way to to submit them. I don't really know if it could go anywhere, you know. It's just no, but you know, it's just a, a calling card. Yeah, it's an easy low level finish. 
Hazuki Mayu did a a pop up drop kick thing where it was just I, I love Stars. Stars is aggressively good. Um, Mayu is Africa still was on her bullshit. Uh, oh, happy yeah. to report. Uh, her her and Mystico lately have just been so entertaining to me because Mystico is fully on his shit. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the Ultimo Guerrero match from Fantastic Mania was so funny. Like Guerrero just hit this big top rope move, and Mystico just kicked out and then hit him with La, La Mystica. And I was like, "That's Man. that's it." He just said, "Lol, no, I win." Like S- that Scott, is so incredible. Scott and I've been talking about it. This Rampage match Mystico had against Matt Seidel. Um, Mystico was like on the ground and he heard the crowd start to like clap in, in like anticipation support. So he starts clapping on the ground with them as he's selling. <laughs> like, he's so like, yeah. funny. I love him. Oh my god. And then god. he gets up and beats him. <laughs> That's it. He's just he's so funny because he simply gets up and wins. He's yeah. like, I don't give a damn about any of that shit. I win. Like that is so funny. It is like prime John Cena all over again, which for people who, who are going to be sad sacks, Prime John Cena is the funniest shit ever. Oh, 100%. so yeah, we I, li- I like the Misco. I like I like the Mayu Utani killing people. Um, we'll talk yeah. about it later about Mayu Mina. Those... We'll talk about a little bit of that later. Oh yeah, poor poor Mina. But yeah, those um, were the main takeaways from that match. Hmm. Um, after that, then we had the New Blood Tag Team Championship match: Hanan and Sai Ida. Defended against Chan Yota and Mai Sakurai when Ida pinned Chan Yota in just under 19 minutes with the Be a Master, which is her big, uh, her driver finish. Her jungle breaker. Yeah. Um, we spent so long being like, please give us secondary tag belts. And it was because of matches like this, where it's yep. just action, 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 uh, involving people who are motivated to, to get the most out of their time are just you know like this is my big chance to showcase myself i'm, I'm gonna go all out and go all out they did because chaniota almost killed saida with that headbutt and the lariats they had a neck bump off like this was mm. this was nuts this was everything you'd want from these tag belts man <laughs> actually i so uh Zavi actually wanted me to to note that this was uh, one of, if not his favorite match of the year that he's seen, um, like it, it was legit, like one of his favorite matches he's seen all year. And he's not like a stardom guy, you know. Like as as me and you know, uh, who are friends with Xavier, Xavier is like, you know, he's just not really like a you know diehard stardom fan like like we are. And he was like, this is the fucking best shit I've seen <laughs> like in a month. Um, and yeah, Scott echoed the same sentiment I did too. This match got on my match of the year, uh, my top 10. Um, it got a nine from me, which is unheard of. Uh, it was just so good. Um, before, I, in fact, my notes, at some point I just started like yelling. I was like getting so excited. Mm-hmm. The The last note I took just said the lariat. I didn't even finish my thought. I was just, I was like jumping out of my chair. <laughs> So all I have is the lariat after Chan Yoda is fucking insane. Those were those were the two notes. Those were the two notes. Um, but yeah, I love this match. Uh, my Sakurai. So they did a a press conference before the show, like a, a signing ceremony thing. And apparently Hanan and Ida were like, "Hey, my Sakurai, like, uh, leave the leave the Your Majesty bullshit at home and let let's fight like fucking like real." And so that's why she didn't wear a hat. That's why she wasn't really like, she didn't do really any gimmicks. She was a bit more, you know, uh, stone faced type of thing. Uh, I, I immediately thought I was like, damn, she looks fucking upset. But no, it's because it's they kind of told her that it's like, hey, we want we want the real my sock, right? Not some gimmick. Um, so that was the the story of her in this match. But ultimately, this is the Ida Chan Yoda show. Um, this was so fucking good. I, I get so excited when Saida proves me right on that the fact that she like when she's on her bullshit she's one of the most entertaining wrestlers like in the world because she's just so fucking insane um, and Chan Yoda man for someone who wrestles like a couple times a month Chan Yoda is fucking insanely good like she is so good. Um, I never thought she was bad, but like she, 
like she's just really impressed me with this match. I went back because of this match. I went back and watched her versus Ryo Mizunami from a PPP show last month. Also quite good. You know, like she, she's just a good wrestler now. And I'm very happy about that. She fucking killed Ida. Ida killed her. Um, this is one of the most fun matches I've seen in a minute. Like I had so much fun with this. Um, I enjoyed it immensely. If you couldn't tell, this is my favorite match of the night. Yes. Oh yeah, you got mad at me when I was like Julia and Tora was almost as good because <laughs> that was no. You said was, it was better. Yeah, that's that why I was mad at you. Saying it's oh, almost yeah, as good, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. But I was like better. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> this match is like one of the was, best matches I've seen this year. That was raw as hell though. That that main event was raw. It um, was. No, yes. I agree. Scott has this as like tag match of the year, and I'm just like, damn, that's that's kind of crazy. But, I, um, it is also my tag team match of the year. Did you watch the Max Hart finals though? I did. I love that match. Oh, wow. Okay. I watched the Max Hart finals and I watched the Grand Altern- Alternativa finals oh, with yeah, Misco yeah. and Brillante. Both great matches. Both matches uh, that are lingering around my, my top 10, uh, like my 9, 10, 11 spot. But yeah, this this one, uh, this was better than Okada versus Danielson, man. <laughs> like, like, this was fucking insane. Well, yeah. It's Okada. I mean, yeah. jeez. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, the, this was cool. Uh, Ida and then Yota are nuts. And uh, Hanan, I like how Hanan was able to pick her spots. Um, yep. She's kind of good at this, not not being the focus of a match, but being able to just get in and throw people. Um, she's great she would everywhere. just run interference and just yeet someone. And I was like, hell yeah, this is what because, we Because like, if we were to take times on that triple threat tag match that we talk about a lot for these belts last year, um, Hanan was... I'm almost positive Hanan was in the ring more than anybody else, like by a decent margin. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was great at that. And then here, it's like her and my soccer, I very noticeably took a backseat role, even though they both did really, really well. Um, but she still just did great in the spots that she came in for. Uh, yeah. Wingori. Yeah. They are, they are our. Um... I don't want to fuck it up. Who was it? Was it Mariko and Kyoko? Not Kyoko. Who was Mariko, it? Was it, it, was it was Mariko Debbie and Malenko Takako? And... It was yeah, Mariko Takako. and Takako. Mariko Wingori... and Takako versus Debbie and Hasegawa. That, that yeah, was the yeah. big one. That was the big Wing, feud shit. Wingori is our Takako and uh, Mariko. Because they, they also carried those undercard belts. And uh, Wingori are just crazy. Um, that match with... Um, Hanako and Waka, it's not official for anything, but they did say they were doing it. Mm-hmm. That's going to be good too, though, if they just let Ida and Hanako go at it. I don't know what Hanan's going to do. I don't know if she pairs off well with either one. The issue is, is that Hanako needs to beat Hanan. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> but, like, that's the story oh. they're telling. Yeah. I don't know. Because you might want to take these belts off Hanan. I could see her having Probably. a big Cinderella. So, I don't know what you do there. But anyway, that'll be a fun match. And Wingori, yeah, I mean, they're, they're the reason you have belts like this. It just works. And Chanyota, I mean, if I'm if I'm these guys, I, I'm I'm signing Chanyota. That's all I know. If I'm anybody, um, I'm signing Chanyota. Man, the, the owner of PPP Tokyo was like, thank you, Ida, for giving for helping Chanyota have the best fucking match for goddamn life. That shit was sick. That was awesome. I'm so proud of Chanyota. She fucking killed it. <laughs> I was like, this dude is hyped, bro. Uh, like, he posted on, like, Instagram. Because, um, like, Ida was like, oh, th- thanks. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. I mean, hey, if, 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 and this is a big if, if Aphrodite, either one of them are leaving, and, um, and Stars isn't, like, you know, Hanan and Ida aren't, uh, then I think I know who I want to win the goddess belts. <laughs> of course. Um, but anyway, we can't uh, we can't talk about that one much more unless you have anything to say. No, it was just great. I, oh, I just, all right. I, I loved it. Cool. Uh, the you next look like match such then. a badass after the match. That, that's my last point. With the bloody nose, just like... Also, Chan Yoda didn't remember the last, like, five minutes of the match. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Like, yes, yeah, this shit was fucking hardcore. <laughs> um, the next match, then, was uh, the E-Nexus V team of Xena, Hanako, Mina Shirakawa, and Micah beating the Cosmic Angels group of Sayori Ano, Siaka Karara, Yuna Mizumori, 
and Tam Nakano. Micah pinned Carrara with a lariat in 13 minutes. Um, this was so much better than it had any right to be. Yeah, this was good. Um, especially because names, I feel... Do you know who the two that stood out to me are? Is it going to be Sayaka and Zena? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> I, <laughs> they did so I know well. you too well at this stage. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I thought I had, I had other takeaways. Um, probably more important takeaways. Um, yeah. But it, this feels like two of the core groups that are going to be the blocks for Bushiroad stardom um, in that uh, um, Micah and Tam have been very public about we are staying. We're gonna we're gonna make this company great, and I think you've seen both of them almost step up a, a little bit out of sheer. I don't know what it is. Just they want they're feeling competitive. They're annoyed at all this attention around the Rossi thing, so they're going crazy. Because I thought Micah, like she was on her game here. The lariats to Carrara were nuts. Um, if like Chanyota and Ida were going hard, Micah was going harder. Like it was, it That's was crazy. That's not true. <laughs> that, is under, that was she was she was not beating true. this child. She was she was she woman. was beating up Carrara, but um, uh, you know. then um, I my main thing was that I feel like Mina and Tam is maybe a long term thing for Tara Okada because they've been split off now twice and they're. Exchanges are very much like we're gonna we're gonna do something with this. Um, so I came away from this wondering if like Tam is maybe gonna win the belt soon and and drop to Mina or something because that seems to be something that they set up with how often they're going at it in these matches of just how much ferocious intent there is. Like they're they're going for it, you know. It's a it's a lot it's a step above the usual exchanges. It is very much a we're teasing something kind of exchange rather than just we're doing this because we're being paired off exchange. Man, I want to scream. <laughs> Why? I don't want to see fucking Tim this versus is, Mina. This again. is stardom. <laughs> this this is the stardom that we're gonna get. Like this is the idols are gonna rule the world. That's, I think we might. I think we might be questioned in a different direction. If that's the case, that's that's how, that's how I'm feeling. Um, no, but I, I I agree. I did kind of peep that. I won. I do wonder if it's just the eternal rivalry type of thing, or if it is like a preview to something. Because it, it feels like a bit more. That's all I can say. I could see that, but I also don't. But you know what I mean. Like, um. Azumi and Shuri feel like they're always teasing something if they're paired off for longer than a minute in a match, just because they always feel like they have more to do with each other. Uh, and I think that might be the case with Tam and Mina. But I definitely get what you mean. I am definitely, in part, coping. Because um, I do not want to fucking see that match for the Red Belt again. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, The Xena Michael Wheelbarrow, the, the Thunder Empress... Empress Thunder, whatever Zena called it. Sick. They fucking mm -hmm. killed Carrara with that. It was disgusting. Um Poor Carrara was really going through it. That's why I mean. Carrara is you haven't been here for the Carrara arc of, of this podcast. Um because <laughs> I've I've yeah. grown to be a big Carrara fan. Carrara might be Nah, Yuzuki's in stars. Are you gonna say your favorite or the best? Favorite, favorite, not not the best. Um, this is such insane, Rana. This like Rana is so cool. Yeah, what? but Rana's not what as good in tag matches as Kara is. I guess. Like Rana's cool in a vacuum, but I think like as an additive to any match, Kara makes matches better. Whereas Rana is just also in matches sometimes. But as a wrestler, I think Rana's probably a better wrestler. Um, has more interesting stuff to her game, but Karara just adds something to most of her matches because she's a really good seller. Um, her few high spots are really cool, and that's 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 what you need here, pretty much. Fair enough, I guess. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I thought this was um a lot better in ring wise than it should have been, and I'm definitely kind of interested in how. You know, the competitive nature it makes everybody better once the split goes down. Um, 
because I do feel like the the Taro Okada side is going to be a bit more motivated to be like, yeah, we don't need those guys, um, as evidenced by matches like this, where you know people like Mina, Carrara, Tam, Micah all just kind of up their game a little bit, and I'm I'm kind of into that. Um, I did note after the match in the post match stuff. Uh, Siriano was kind of like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a challenger. Um, you know, the Cinderella tournament winner gets to pick their belt. Tam was like, oh, I have a suggestion for who might challenge you, and I'll I'll say it once uh, Natsupoi is back. Um, so I don't like how Tam is in both of these title pictures. It's very interesting to me because she's... she's I feel like if Natsupoi can't go, they've made it so that Tam is a logical challenger to Anno. Because she's kind of been, Anno's kind of been like, yeah, man, I don't know. I don't have a challenger. I have somebody in mind. And it's always around Tam. And she never says it. Well, well, probably. It's always around Tam. She's probably going to challenge for all three of the big, possibly all four of the big, of the belts, the singles belts, uh, until she wins one. Mm, Yeah. Uh, Well, my thought was, what if they. What if Tam wins the white and red and is going to unify them? <laughs> because Fuck. because Taro Okada is going to make more use of the IWGP and maybe the strong. So he doesn't need four main belts. So I I I I think Tam being in both title pictures has my has me kind of like I wonder if she's going for both and if she wins both again because she's very much been in and around that orbit of Anno. Every time Anno's like, yeah, I have a challenger in mind, but I don't want to say it. It's always around Tam. Um, so I don't know. I think the the, the play is not to play Anno, but if not to play isn't ready, I I wonder if they go to just uh Tam and Anno because it's it's very interesting how often they kind of he's fighting each other we need to have like like webcams for this show so that people could just see the despair in my eyes um, in my heart um, <laughs> i don't know i could be wrong all those I things mean, that you say do, do come true i know like that that, that is like, like, tom, kind of like tom might just win one of them and pull the things other. Have, yeah a lot of things have to have to go come true for that to happen and i feel like double belting tam feels like such a obviously not good move. Well, okay, right but now. she's she is probably going to be the de- de- definitive star of Tara Okada's, you know, reign. Yeah. Um, you know, that's just he was in the musical side, know. wasn't he? Was that yeah. was that his thing? He's a theater guy. Yeah. Probably probably met her when they did that concert. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's the music side. I think that's like way more strong in Bushiroad music than theater. Maybe so, yeah. he's fully going in on Meltier. I don't know. But uh, it does seem like Anno and Poi is the play because they do keep mentioning that's a Poi. Um, but I, they've kind of moved Tam into that space as well. Who do you I'm think wins curious. the Cinderella? <sighs> now that Poi's um, not in it. I don't know because they've set up a few viable people. Um Hanan could go far. She's she's been pushed up a little bit. Um, Depends on how early her and Mace are set to meet. Yeah. Because like, could, unless that's could like do a another Starlight Kid match. Starlight Kid did challenge Mayu ages ago. They could do Kid and Mayu um, out of the Cinderella. I wouldn't mind that. Because um, I would imagine it's somebody challenging for a different belt than the red belt. Um, Especially with oh, yeah, a lot of the, the top... white or the red or the yeah, the like with the, with the top names out, it's probably not the red belt, um, and maybe the white belt. But even then, I don't know. Some of these people challenging for the white belt, so it could be one of the ones where they go off the beaten track and challenge for the IWGP or something. Unless so... it's Suzu, who well, she would still probably challenge for the IWGP. I don't think they are going to run back the Mika match that quick. Yeah, and Suzu just got pinned by Mayu the other month, so. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be yeah. so sure of that. Yeah, we'll see. Mariah Koguma. Kobe. Koguma has a shout. I thought Koguma had a shout, but she got injured and it kind of derailed she, her momentum. She lost in eight minutes to Suzu. Yeah. Day. So I don't know about Koguma, but I was 
pretty sure they were going to do something with her. Um, and then they kind of aren't. So who knows? But um, yeah, that's uh, that's Cosmic Angels time. We're going to have to get used to that, I think, um, under, under Mr. Okada. And the main event then of this show was the New Japan Strong Women's Championship. Uh, Julia defended against Natsuko Tora in 16 and a half minutes with a Northern Lights Bomb. Um, I don't know where they pulled this match out of because they've never had good chemistry, but this was just so physical and raw. Uh, Julia breaking half of the table off of Tora's head was so cool. Um, need more wrestlers to use the chunk of a table. Like, it, yeah, but then we it, saw why they don't because she almost fucking killed her afterwards so, trying to get it off. So, it's the risk you take. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I mean, listen, all I know is Kyoru and Aja Kong did this like 22 years ago and nobody copied them and you're all stupid for it. So, uh, more table chunks being used in matches. Um, but yeah, Julia, it, it, she's at her best when she brawls. I mean, we all know that. So, this played into her strengths and Tora was able to kind of they didn't focus too much on weapons so Tora was able to just kind of beat on her um, without the referee running in all the time so I don't know I thought it was a good mix of the two of them um, well, and the, no they PC actually played the stipulation well yeah. but yeah that's that's why like they didn't overdo the weapons Tora was just allowed to be mean and a bully I, I will say I think this was missing one defining spot outside of the table stuff i appreciated its simplicity but i also was kind of like okay i've seen this exact lineup of a match before um and you know you've seen a million hardcore matches i was like i feel like they need to do some like one thing that is like off the beaten path and mm. the 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 table you know the break in the table over natsuko's head that was that was one of them but i kind of would appreciate if there was just one other thing i don't even know what like, I don't know. I, I saw that there be, could be, like, one more, like, definitive spot. Like, Natsuko got win up and was going to go for, like, a fucking dive to the outside, um, which her knees would not have allowed that. I was fucking no. scared. But something like that, I think, could have made this match a bit better for me. I still loved it, though. I saw it was very, very fun. Um, Julia won, which was choice um <laughs> she came out she came out with with the table looking like 99 linus asuka which was sick uh yeah i, I really like this match i like that natsuko did this all favor and cut those goddamn those goddamn dreads uh of julia's my commentary which, on that was quite funny i thought i was like <laughs> julia's braids are so musty it's taken her ages to cut it yeah um she looked great the next show so i'm just like did. why don't you just always look like this julia um because yeah. they just don't, and like that's not me against the hairstyle. I think the hairstyle looks great on on some people, but I just don't think Julia looks that good with them. For her to wear them like year round, you know, what I mean, I was like, why? Why has this? Why is this your? Your? Why did you make this decision? Um, <laughs> but I just yeah. worry about her hair. Honestly, they they look like very demanding braids i feel like her scalp oh she is gonna drops be ruined. she drops like hundreds of dollars on it every month yeah like every other week like her hair is gonna be ruined by age 40 <laughs> like I don't, I don't know oh i mean risa endo endo is uh you know like eight years younger than her i think maybe and uh her hair is gonna be fucked by the fried. time she's yeah hers is, hers is deep fried <laughs> um, but she's allowed. Ariso Endo is sending us messages. You know that's Ariso Endo's kind of fucking legend, hair god, right there. She's beast. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna start calling her the hair god. That's the that's the nickname of, of a rapper I like. But no, nah, it's Ariso Endo now. Oh, why um, not? But yeah, I thought this match was really really great. I, I thought Natsuko mm. did so well. Um, I am upset that she didn't win. If I'm being quite honest, yeah. Um, but I'm yeah. also concerned about what she's up to um because she um, she was a bit cryptic a day later um i feel like they're just gonna do season. a faction thing more than i feel like she's she's bushy road um but i feel like there might be a no, faction i don't i don't think there. she's leaving for rossi oh I'm yeah or she's gonna retire mm. if Would i she... i don't think i don't think natsuko goes with with rossi i think she's older I think she will retire within the next few years, so I don't think there's any point in her like 
making this jump. Plus, she already said that she likes Okada. Uh, yeah. So it's like you know, there's there's no reason for her to leave really, as far as I could tell. Um, I'm more worried that she like retires or something because it is that season, like I said. I guess, and she did she did lose pretty definitively to Utami in December. I mean, I remember I I pointed it out at the time. I was like, that was a very one sided win. She lost to Utami definitively. She got pinned by Megan, uh, like a couple weeks later, and now this, which mm. was like the biggest layup for Nascotora that I've ever seen. I and guess, but I, I feel like they still plan to get the belt onto Stephanie it's in some manner. I thought Natsuko was going to so, hold it and then drop it to Stephanie in like a month. Two I don't months know. Now. That, you see, I feel like if they were going to put it on anyone as a transitional reign, it would be somebody popular with English fans. Because you're, you're probably going to do it on yeah. a New Japan show in America, unless they do send Juliet to Arena Mexico. But I think Toro was probably one of the less likely people to, to be a transitional well, now champion. they have to bring in Stephanie back here and have her wrestle in Japan. Because why not? Um, unless her, they was her heat Julia with Rossi. Because I mean, if her yeah, heat was true. with Rossi, she's available. They could always do it on a New Japan show. I mean, I don't see why they can't. I would love that. For unless the unless Stephanie isn't allowed in Japan, but she was just in Japan for a tour like two years yeah, ago. For, so for ice. Yeah, she did ice ribbon. She actually wrestled Siriano. Uh, yeah, which is, it's fun. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I didn't think Toro was going to win. I was still kind of surprised that they did this match because I was like, your your time is running low here on Julia. So what are you what are you doing? But they just seem very relaxed about all this. Because um, this, if you watch this Corkin without any idea of what the news has been, you legitimately wouldn't have noticed that anything has changed. Like the the vibes were fine. This was just as good as the show is from last month before, you know, the Rossi bomb dropped. Like, they're just continuing on. It's really strange, almost. <laughs> but I don't know. I know. I didn't expect them to, like, acknowledge it, but I expected just a little bit more, like... Like, big people, you friction. know, big upsets, things yeah. moving. Like, but no, everybody's like the only The going. only person that has discernibly been... Not buried, even, but like been put under is my Sakurai. <laughs> That's yeah, it. Yeah, Mayu literally walked out with boo boo faces, and they don't—they're not doing anything to her. Like it's crazy. But um, yeah, I don't know. I thought I'm—I'm um, I'm kind of intrigued by stardom right now. Um, yeah, the Julia result was—I um, wasn't as surprised by it, but you know See, what? That's actually why we're like, watching it. I feel like we need to—we need to—we need to just say it now. I think they got to do more if she sticks around with Natsuko Tora. It, it's time. Yeah, just, just get off the pot with, with Tora. Yeah, it's time. She's good. Her vibes are immaculate. If you gave her even a little bit of a push, I think she'd have that kind of a monstrous aura to her that would make her matches even better. So just get to it. Just just do the thing. Because um, she's like, so consistent. Um, but yeah, I, I would do something with Natsuko Tora. But I don't know. They don't seem interested. But may- maybe they. Maybe that's what she's teasing. Who knows? So we'll have to yeah, wait and I don't see. Know. It's it's interesting. Um, yeah, I I do think that after the match, it was odd but interesting that this the, was like the the post match time... seemed like a real Julia send off. It was the first big. Oh yeah, she's there. Somebody is leaving. Kind of thing. Which. Which I kind of I did appreciate because it was pretty much like Natsuko like saying that it's like, hey, you're the only wrestler who like really like could do the hardcore matches with me that I wanted to do, so I appreciate yeah. you for that. And um, this was like their definitive hardcore match. This was their definitive singles match against each other because um, mm-hmm. that last one wasn't that great, um, and neither was I think they had another singles match that also was good. You know, it was fine. Um, but yeah, so this is like their definitive match between each other, and I think that there was this... They, they were kind of two of a kind in that sense, in that they were the wrestlers who were like willing to go for go for a walk, you know, go brawl and beat each other up with chairs and tables and stuff. Because like, you look at a Momo, she's not very good at that stuff. Like, I think yeah. actively those, those, those tropes make her matches like less enjoyable, whereas they amplify a Natsuko match and they amplify a Julia match most of the time. You know, mm-hmm. so I think, 
I get why that was kind of like a good send off, and I, I appreciate it as a send off. Uh, it is wild that Nasco lost, though, given that that was the send off. And like I was saying, uh, the reason me and Zavi were watching it live together, and Scott was obviously watching it, but was because we thought this was going to be the first Nasco Tora singles vic- single style victory. Oh no. That's crazy. And it wasn't. The, you know the last time that she won a significant title was in 2018? That's crazy. Ever wow. since then, it's been artist belts exclusively. She's uh, she's an interesting case, isn't she? The, the yeah. use of Tora. But anyway, that was the Karkin. Good show. I enjoyed it. Uh, sure, got yeah. got me back in the got me back in the swing with the stardom because I realized that they are just gonna keep on going like nothing changed. So <laughs> I probably should too. Um, after that, then there was another show to talk about. It was uh, on February eighteenth. This was Stardom in Shibuya, twenty twenty four. It was in the Bell Sal Shibuya first, and they did a sold out three hundred and fifty six fans for this one. Um, in the opener, we had Rina and Rocka beating Hanako and Wakasuyama. Rina actually pinned Hanako with a jackknife uh, shrimp. Or the jackknife roll. Are trying, to, uh, trying to fucking challenge for a belt. Uh, they can't oh, beat yeah. oh, Rocka shit. and Rina. That's tough. Like, That's crazy. Like It's hard because I think Bushiroad sees something in Rocka. Like, I think that's why they're very clearly, uh, you know, using her a bit more than ever. Um, well, she didn't so even I, win, so I don't know about that. Well, no, but Rena's the future champion, and these are all future division people. Uh, Waka so I get, is not a future division person. She's challenging for the new, new blood. Yeah, but those are, like, different. Hanan yeah. holds that, and she's not in the future division. Okay, you're right, but I don't think Waka could beat Rena. Uh, and I don't think either of them are beating Ruaka right now. You, do you get what I'm trying to say? Hanako probably could have beat Ruaka though. That's I don't I mean, know. Maybe they they're just like setting Ruaka. up challengers like Rina and Ruaka will challenge. Challenge who? Hanako and Waka if they win the new blood belts, it'll give them an easy first challenge. I, I don't know. You I know, don't know, I will say though, this uh, this new guy, he seems to be a lot more lenient with people taking pins, um, which is kind of chill. Because, yeah, Hanako taking a pin is interesting. Hanako's and, been pinned, uh, like, ever since she joined EXV. It's kind of funny. Yeah, you know what I mean, though? Because he, like, Mayu took a pin to Mina the other day, and I was like, wow, that's crazy. Like, you're just done over the top rope, but they didn't. Um, yeah, but that but happens anyway. every year. Hazuki beat Saya last year around this time. All right. Fine. Kill, just kill my kill my entire flow. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that was the opener. Uh, the next match in May, Sarah beating Mai Sakurai with a Meteor Dragon. That sounds cool as hell. Um, Mai Sakurai oh, continues the, to lose. It's the um, Muda, Muda, the Deathlock, Indian Deathlock with the with the the, the Dragon Sleeper. You you know how the new you know the new regime doesn't mess with Mai Sakurai at all. Uh, she doesn't get to talk ever. Yeah. Like they Wait, used to give her she, promo time no matter what. But she doesn't talk. She didn't, she didn't get a promo. Um, Hanan was also yeah. in this match. It was a three-way match. Uh, it wasn't as clear. But yeah, it was a three-way, and uh, Maysera beat uh, my Sakurai. And this reignited the hanan Maysera feud. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, Maysera was kind of like, oh, I'll see you in the fucking Cinderella, bitch. And that was like... <laughs> yeah. Um, then we had Momotanabe, Starlight Kid, Natsuko Tora beating Sayaka Karara, Yunimiz Mori, and Tam Nakano. Uh, Kid beat Sayaka Karara in 12 minutes with a Black Tiger Leg Destroyer. You know, we never talked uh, about it. How do you feel about Kid's new gear? Uh, it's I really okay. like it. I, it's, it's a bit too Shawn Michaels. Like, Shawn Michaels would have wore those. I, I like Shawn Michaels' gear, except for the poo-poo ones. Oh. They were going to say, I like Shawn Michaels, and I was, that was a hot take. I don't think I've ever spoken to anybody who is like, I enjoy Shawn Michaels' work. <laughs> like, oh, my mom. That's my favorite. That's her favorite wrestler. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, people in our circles, you know? Yeah, no. I feel, right. I feel like everybody grows out of thinking Shawn Michaels is good. Um, but maybe he is good. I don't know. I haven't gone back to watch his stuff. I'm not. I, I, I have, have like, time. like, I, I know people, like, I don't know. I, 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 the stuff that I've seen in recent times of old Shawn Michaels, I still enjoy. Uh, right. I, I think he, 
he's like Will Ospreay, except he's good. Um, in that everybody wants to be Shawn Michaels and it makes them worse. Right. Like everybody wants to be Will Ospreay and it makes them worse. Uh, mm-hmm. but Shawn Michaels was like actually like a, a good wrestler in on on his good days. I I don't really see him that much with Will that's personally. Uh, Fair so I think Fair I think that's where it is. Is that it's like you see Johnny Gargano and it's like I fucking blame that motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, whereas like you know he he had some fun matches. All right. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Um, it was after this. They don't have it on the report, or do they? No. It doesn't look like it. I have it on the report, but it, that's Kotora was kind of teasing something. She was like, "Hey, I have something to say. Not now, but I have something." And uh, Momo and Kid it. looked very confused. Yeah. Well, Momo, Momo had this like weird smile, and I was like, hey, "Are you Momo, like?" That's just that's just Momo's like constipated face. She I she like accidentally <laughs> emoted. You know, she like yeah. accidentally hit the left direction button or something because she was just, like emote. She has that like uh, weird like evil smirk that she does. Yeah. I need her to stop being evil. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> See. <laughs> This is why I need her to go to Rossi because um, he's not going to have people to push ahead of her. Um, so he's going to have no choice but to give us old Momo back instead of um, this. So, you know, just putting that out there to the universe. Rossi, please sign Momo and Abe. That's, that's all I ask. <laughs> um, anyway, we had, then had Suzu Suzuki and Julia beating Hazuki and Koguma in just under 10 minutes. Suzu beat Koguma in just under 10 minutes, as I said, with a German suplex hold. So, Julia really is not doing any jobs. This is It, it is so funny. Like That is that's crazy. She's going to end up doing one job, and it'll be who fucking knows? Maybe to Sari. Maybe Sari is going to get around the Sariism oh, yeah. and be like, you are losing or I'm going to kill you. And uh, Julia will have no choice. Oh my god, did you see how bad Tokyo Sports fucked up today? No, what did they do? So Sari was talking in an interview about a recent Nakajima. And oh. the editor, for whatever reason, thought she was talking about Katsuhiko Nakajima. Ooh. So the entire article is like, yeah, even though they're in different, even though they're like in different scenes it's like a Risa, you know or a sorry season and she just tweets like i i have no opinion on katsuhiko nakajima <laughs> this that's is about crazy. my tag team partner <laughs> that's crazy how do you but it was because she was that? wearing like she was wearing like a noki gear and shit because she's uh, a nokiist yes. so i guess they just assume i don't fucking know it was... <laughs> i saw that i uh, thought that very funny that was crazy um but yeah sorry is gonna kick the shit out of julia um we then had Mio Amasaki, Lady C, Azumi, Saya Kamatani, and Utami Hashishita beating Rani Agami, Saki Kashima, Amisore, Mirai, and Siri. Mio Amasaki got the win with Tensei. Um, again, interesting, interesting result there. Mio, Mio staring down the camera while she pins. Yeah. This is a real wrestler now, guys. I don't. <laughs> Mio got Riz. She found it. It is crazy. No, I agree. I, I think Mio's She's too powerful now. Kind of killing it. Uh, yeah. I I don't know if I've seen another Queen's Quest member win a match uh, in the past like four weeks. I know they just they're going all in on, on either Kevin. they lose or Miu wins. That's crazy. So funny. Um, we then had the main event of Zena, Mina Shirakawa, and Mika beating Yuzuki, Saida, and Mayu Otani. When Mina got the win over Yuzuki with the figure four leg lock. Yeah, it's a leg lock. Because she has the leg lock, and then she has the figure four driver. So I'm, I'm never yeah. sure. It's yeah, she lock. tapped out Yuzuki. Yuzuki's, um, Yuzuki is like getting lo- got him messed that up. She's losing a lot now, which is kind of interesting. She's being, she's been taken back down to earth. I think. Yeah, it's weird because they like. They I don't think they believe in super, super rookies. rookies. I, I don't think they. I don't, I, I don't yeah. know if they know how to book them. I'm just kind of, it's just weird because it's like she's getting pinned as much as Rana and Karara, even though initially she was presented as like the leader of that I, pack. I also think, and this is pure speculation, but also one to one to one. I also think that of the new batch of rookies, Yuzuki's the most likely to leave within a year and a half. You mean because, the one uh, that's in the Mayu faction? <laughs> the one who said that the only reason that she wanted to wrestle in stardom was because of Mayu Utani? Maybe. Uh, yeah. 
you know, the one who sense. swore her loyalty to Mayu Utani, perhaps will follow her <laughs> wherever she goes. Maybe. That's uh, that's interesting. I, I hadn't... Uh, I won't say I hadn't thought of that, because I had thought of that, but yeah, I didn't know it was that deep. So yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Um, Mina winning both of the well, maybe preview not the tags. the only reason, but it was the biggest reason. Like, that's the only yeah. thing she's talked about. Um, Mina winning both of the preview tags against Mayu is um, kind of intriguing, because usually they split them. Um, but she's just been, like, all over stars. Um, I don't know if that means she's less likely to win or if she's more likely to win. I think Mina beating Mayu would be a very interesting decision. Um, but a decision, I, I, a decision that would be uh, three months too early, buddy. Yeah, so I... Uh, yeah, you're right. Mayu, Mayu is not dropping that belt until the movie is out. So that, that makes sense. Um, did they say anything in the promo? Yeah, but to be honest, it's been a long time. And Maya's fighting the star. She's smiling and having so much fun. Nexus V. Uh, no. No, I didn't really do much. Anyway. Just see it happen. Yeah, this is the, definitely the like new faction bump for e Nexus V. I would, I'm surprised that they haven't already won the Artist Belts. Um, they did challenge for the Artist Belts, didn't yeah, they? I'm not... They have a preview match this weekend, as far as I know. Oh, remember. okay. All right. That's cool. They do not have um, the match, though, yet. But no. it, one of these matches looks like a preview match. Okay, that's fair enough. So, yeah, because I, I was like, they're a new faction, they're getting pushed, it is time for the Iris Belts. <laughs> um, so, it's actually, yeah, this Fri- Friday? Yep. So, yeah, for me, okay. tomorrow night. Oh. Oh, yeah. New beginning in Sapporo. And it is Mayu versus Mina. So, yeah, um, that could be good. Um, definitely match of the night. I mean, that card looks awful. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, sorry to any New Japan. Sorry to any New Japan fans out there. But um, the best looking Nick, matches Nick are Nemeth both, both House Finley. of Torture. <laughs> the best looking matches are both House of Torture. So that's telling. Say that. Say something. that to Xavier. I dare you. Say no, I, like, hey, I'm saying those are going to be the best matches because um, the House of Torture wrestlers know how to. Yeah, who's you know, Tomoya? Intrigue. Huh? What is the Tomoya? He's in the Frontier Zone. Oh yeah, Frontier Zone is they bring independent wrestlers and have them wrestle. So he's Tomo probably so. Hanma, Shoma Kato, and Tomoya. That's a that's a young lion. Yep. Shin Nihon freaks. Uh, Yuji Nagata versus Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, uh, I'm containing Callum. my excitement. <laughs> Dude, this card. How do people watch this? Anyway, um, yeah, no, the the Mayu Mina match is, is by far the best one here. I mean. Dear God, evil and show to Umino. That that will be oh, that will be no. Desperado and show is show even still, still like thing. Um, uh, show is like show doesn't wrestle anymore. Um, okay, good. Yeah, he he just he just laughs maniacally. He, he he's right. very Oedo tie build. Like you know Momo when she first started in Oedo tie, he's yeah. basically like that, except okay. like eternally. Um, but that not match Riddle is actually Hiroshi no, let's not let's not talk about that. Let's talk about show real quick. Uh, that no, match... I don't want to talk about <laughs> show. I never liked show. Um, okay. I listen. Uh, but when you're next to Yo, I won't I won't speak Yen about my pretty. feelings for Yo. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't. I won't like worry people with talk by talking about Yo. But um, yeah, show never stood out to me. Um, so yeah, Mayu probably retains because she is not losing the belt until the movie. <laughs> It is Drops. not unlikely that she fucking murders Mina Shirakawa. Oh yeah, she might kill her. Like this, this might be a bloodbath, um, and it will definitely blow away anything on this card. Yeah. Um, like I, you know, Nick Nemeth is cool and all, but if he drags anything out of David Finley that is on par with Mayu Watani, he yeah. is legitimately <laughs> the greatest wrestler of all time. Um, so yeah, that's the that's that's that. I will not be watching that live because. You could not make will. me watch that. Like you would have to pay me vast amounts of money to watch that. Like I'm sorry, like that, like Lij house show tags. No, I I would See, rather. That, die. That's the issue. It's for me. It's like Swiss cheese, because uh, there's like holes in the card, right? Where it's like, oh, I'm interested in Yuji versus Zach, and then it's like, you know, two you house are. show tags are, are. And then it's like, oh, Mai versus Mina, and then it's God. 
And then it's, it's oh, it's House of Torture. Those, those matches look good. Hamatonga uh, really on the card? Is Shoda. he still around? I thought they got rid of his home. Who, Okada? No, uh, Tamatonga. You said G.O.D. This is his last match. This is his last match. It's, it's original G.O.D. versus the new and somehow worse G.O.D. There's a new G.O.D.? It's El Fantasmo and Hikuleo. <laughs> how how are they like how did they fi- like god like the original god at their best were like all right you, you how did they find you know a consistently way worse tag team <laughs> i have no idea you know when i was a new japan fan people were like complaining that the killer elite squad were like the dregs of the card um like a killer elite squad match now would be like the match of the night and most of oh 100 like Lance Archer dog walks half of this card, <laughs> like yeah. like not even close. And even that even David Hart Smith, despite being a fucking psychopath, uh, is good at tag matches now. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of what are the client? Up. How do people still watch New Japan? I know it's like judgmental and all, but these shows literally look awful. Like how do you how do you do this to yourself? Yeah, I'm a I'm a masochist. Yeah, I guess. Anyway. There's two shows from starting this weekend to preview the wash the taste of New Japan out of your mouth. Uh, we have Saki Kashima versus Hanako versus Fukigen Death. Oh my. Um, Saki is Oh, gonna... they do the cards now differently. Yeah, they, they the do bottom to top. Yeah, it's a whole new world out here, Dylan. Um, <laughs> yeah, what are the what are the fast wrestlers is going to roll up Hanako, I guess? Who Who is the... What? Oh, Saki Kashima's winning. Yeah, yeah or Fukigen. No, they're going to... Very yeah, but tricky. what do you know about the revival? That's true. What do you know about the roll up from the clown? Death. Fair enough. Uh, we have Hana and Sai Ida and Yuzuki. There's Momo and Abe, Starlight Kid and Rokka. Um, either Hana or Kid is going to win that one. They're both kind of on a run of steam. Oh, yeah, they're going to pin Yuzuki. Over. Yeah, Kid is going to yeah. break Yuzuki's leg or destroy her leg or whatever it is. Um, Sorry, Ano, Tam Nakano, Mori. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. Uh, Cosmic Angels versus Julia, May Sarah, Suzuki, and Mai Sakurai. Cosmic Angels is winning because they are all definitely staying. Um, and two of the other match, wait, wait, wait. two of the other Who team are not. Is Sakurai now on that? Yeah, yeah. Karara loses. She hasn't. She, no, she's they're, not they're... On the winning side of matches. Hmm. Do they really prioritize? That over my Sakurai. Oh, this is gonna be the this is gonna be that match like the battle of the losers because like yeah, <laughs> who's yeah, how that's gonna how be, that's gonna be heavy handed will the Julia Tam stuff if, be? Or if, if do you Angels think they even like my Sakurai? Then my Sakurai like spit in somebody's face. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. But um, Tam and Julia are they gonna be heavy handed or do they just are they are they you dumb? know? I don't know. Because the reports from Dave, if I had Julia, I'd be done. Like, I don't know, man. I, it I would is, not. It is kind of fucked up to, to think about that. Like, oh, you don't want to work this match with somebody that you think might hurt you? Lose to your second least favorite person ever? Uh, yeah. Lose the belt to her. In, in my <laughs> mind, and I don't know if this is true, but in my mind, they are stardoms, uh, Brett and Sean. Like, they are just constantly at each other I and trying to out politic the other. Um, I don't know if that's true, but that's just my my funny thought. It doesn't it doesn't sound that far fetched. No. Um. Anyway, the next match is Utami and also and... it would kind of make sense why Tam yeah. would politic her way out of losing to Suzu, Julia's yeah. young girl. Yeah. Brett and Sean, what can that's I tell you? Just saying. Um. We have Tammy and Kevin versus Tora and Rena. Um. I mean, Kevin or Rena is going to get the win over the other one. It's a preview tag. Uh, yeah, whoever wins this match yeah. probably loses the next day. All right. Uh, we then have Mayu Otani, Hazuki, and Koguma versus Sayaka Matani, Azumi, and Lady C. Uh, that is a Stars win. That is a Stars A team. Yep. And then we have in the main event, Enexus V, the team of Micah, Mina Shirakawa, Wakasukiyama, and Zena. This is Siri. Mirai, Amisori, and Rana Yagami. That's probably Enexus V over yep. Rana. And okay. uh, we might get a title challenge. From? From Enexus V to the artists. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. All right. That would be the place to, to decide it. 
Um, and also maybe Micah and Shuri. Yeah, I have been thinking about that because Siri is one of the you know few people that Micah has a story with technically um, and a history, and she's been protected like she's been winning matches. So you could definitely put Siri in a red belt match. And they are um, they are pushing off the Tam match because uh, after weeks of building up that Tam versus Micah match, Micah said, "Oh, I have no challengers. I wonder when somebody's going to challenge me." <laughs> yeah, that's why I think they're waiting on Poi because. Tam kind of moved from that into the white belt scene. So I, I don't know if they're like waiting to see how Natsupoi goes to decide what Tam does. Because mm. I'd imagine Tam and, and Micah was the original plan for Buntai and probably yeah. Anno versus Poi. But then if, if Natsupoi isn't ready, you have Tam versus Anno and I don't know, Micah versus whoever. But that's that's looking long into the future. Well, We're almost at hour two. I'm at a I'm at a practice like, um, so I, I I'm just I'm. We we'll also have I'm, to see who's I'm left by uh, by Buntai. That's true. I I left, mean it seems who, like who there won't be. Left, uh, yeah, it's gonna be weird to to cover because you can't that. run Julia Micah. You know what I mean? No, which was probably the original idea with how they were both talking about a double title match and stuff. Um, but anyway. Uh, uh, not September, February 25th we have uh, a show in the Light Cube Utsunomiya um, we have Amisori versus Rana Yagami in an inter intra-faction match there which Amisori is going to win we have Azumi versus Suzu Suzuki versus Sayaka Kurara which Kurara is going to lose Who, it was Azumi and Suzu? Suzu, yeah yeah, that, that's anybody's game really. alright uh, we then have Siri, Mirai, and Saki Kashima versus Hazuki, Koguma, and Yuzuki. Um, Yuzuki probably takes a fall there. Siri? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Or, or Saki if they want to do revival stuff. They could, they could get, um, yeah, so, I mean, Hazuki could beat Saki if they want to put Hazuki mm, over heading into nah. Cindy, but they don't really need nah. to. No, it should be fine. Uh, we then have Tami Sakam Tani Lee C versus Julia May Sarah and Mai Sakurai. It's probably Aphrodite over Mai. Yeah. Okay. I think. Um, we then have what if, a. What if they have Lady C finally defeat Mai Sakurai? I mean, why not? Lady C seems invigorated lately, so yeah. let's get it. These house shows look. Uh, not fun, I will say. Um, oh yeah, they, I, they're definitely they're definitely worse. Yeah, I, I, I do like that they've probably very stay... much. Good. Yeah, the car, but I feel like I I do like that they've said fully and finally that the house shows do not matter. <laughs> you don't have to watch them unless you're insane. So that's. I good. mean, I I was talking about it last week that I think one thing that they should probably do or at least think about doing is um. So, the thing is, is that they're treating these house shows like New Japan does treat their house shows and their road two yeah. shows. Except the thing with New Japan is they have tours, mm. so it's like you know a bundle of these you know uh, road two shows, like prelim matches, kind of you know preview mm. matches. Then they do the big events, and then they get a break. The issue with mm -hmm. this is that they have like one pay per view every other month, and they have like one cork in every month. So it's just like. 90% of what is available to watch is the road to is like the the house shows. Uh whereas whereas New Japan they kind of fall under the radar cuz they have these big shows that like are being led up to at all times. You know like it's it's a road to destruction. It's not just here's 20 house shows and then there's going to be one one show that actually has anything of substance on it and then 20 more house shows for the next 5 weeks. Mm -hmm. So I like I think the the difference in scheduling, like this, like the tour schedule versus the weekly schedule, uh, I, I think that might wear stardom out a bit because they do it in the way they do. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say? Um, um, I don't know. I feel like they, they run so little now that they'd be okay. Yeah, but they they still run two shows every weekend. Yeah, but I mean that's fine, jeez. Like, no, I, I like I'm I'm not saying that like this as like a precaution for uh for the wrestlers. I'm saying this as a precaution for getting tired of stardom and forgetting when the big shows are because there are so many shows in between them. 
Um, I get, but they, they seem good about peppering stuff in so far. So, okay. I don't. Um, I I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Um, what was? The, oh yeah, the next match anyway. <laughs> Ten woman tag: Micah, Mina Shirakawa, Zena, Wakasakama, and Hanako versus Natsuko Tora, Momo Anabe, Starlight Kid, Raka, and Fuki Gin Death. Um, uh, Tora the might... thing Natsuko was deciding on was that uh, they're gonna also join E Nexus V to create yeah. E Nexus V Nexus M, which is monster. Nice. E Nexus like V it. Monster Goon. That's what it is. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, we, uh, I would, I would be okay with that. Um. So yeah, E Nexus V winning because the way the tie kind of don't win as much unless it's kid. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Tora might ha- announce Hanukkah her thing. Hanako loses. Hanako loses. That's true. A lot. Okay. So Hanako. And kid over Hanako. Like I said, Ruaka probably has a higher standing than Hanako right now. So yeah, I could, you I could see. are very much overestimating Raka, but that's okay. Um, yeah. We have a future of Starum Championship match: Rina against Miyu Amasaki. Um, you know me; I, I think Miyu Amasaki should be the champion. Uh, you believe Rina wins because this is her hometown, or close to it? It's Tochigi. Yeah, it's in the prefecture. Yeah. Um, All right. I mean, I could see either, but you know. yeah. Um. Then we have yeah. it is, yeah, it says Tuchigi up the top. Um then we have Mayu, Hanan and Ida versus Tam Nakano, Seori Ano, and Yunim Zamori. Um it's probably Cosmic Angels, because they seem to be into Unimon now. Um I don't know, that can go either way. Well could, Ano yeah. and Tam is, is a hard top two, but yeah. I also think Ida might be over Yuna. Mm, so it it's like it's on the it's, day. Yeah, Mayu exactly. should like eviscerate Tam. That would be really funny. It would be. Um, but that is that. Those are those I mean, two shows. We're I, all I don't... waiting. We're all waiting for that. That uh, well, we are all. I, I mean, me and you are waiting for that uh, Shinobu Kondori, Jackie Sato esque fight. <laughs> to, yeah. To really kick this, really light this candle. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Um. Yeah, that's uh, the the shows are looking pretty bad up until they got Cinderella. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try and make the most of this. Um, we'll be back next week, maybe if I don't lose the will to to cover this company. Um, <laughs> we'll be back next week to discuss the uh, house shows of this past weekend, and we will look forward to visits to Kanazawa and Jotsu. I hope you're all big fans of those two places. Um, because yeah, we can then look ahead to the Yokohama Budokan after that. So, yay, yay! All right, yeah, with actually, that, actually, uh, widescreen texted me something very funny that I was going to steal. It was a joke I was going to steal, but then it didn't even work because uh, Mayu's not in the in the, in the tournament. Shindy. Um, yeah, in the Cindy, because uh, widescreen told me he was like. Man, imagine if Mayu just like shoots her way into winning the the Cinderella and wishes for her way out of her contract. Um, That'd be so funny. And I I I pop for that. I pop for that big. But she's not even in the fucking tournament. They they actually nope. they they were smart. They kept her out of it so that she could not possibly uh, <laughs> work herself into a into getting out of her fucking company. I I Fair feel company. like they wouldn't allow that to happen anyway. But who knows, man? Maybe. Um, hey, but anyway, if, if, yeah, imagine if Mayu just took like went into business for three straight weeks, <laughs> they didn't stop her. <laughs> she She's supposed to like draw round one, and she's like, Oh, oops, I forgot. And then the next show, she's like, Yeah, but she she looked at me funny, so I beat her. And then she starts beating people up, and it's like, Yeah, I win now. <laughs> what are you gonna do? We we need more loose cannons in wrestling, that is for sure, but. That is that, that for is, the show? Because this is how un- we've gone very Dylan, please <laughs> We gotta we gotta wrap it up. <laughs> I hate how not messy this has been. I, I wish it was messier. It'd be so much more. It will fun get messier. I think it'll get a lot messier. Um but anyway, it's time to close the show. If you want to stand, you may stand. If you want to sit, you may sit. Believe today, shine tomorrow. You decide what you believe in. Ejo. Ejo.